Welcome to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation's CF Education Day webcast, Burkholderia Cepatia Complex, or B. Cepatia. This webcast is supported through an unrestricted educational grant from Genentech and Gilead. I'm Kathy O'Malley, your host, a CF Respiratory Specialist at the Ann and Robert H. Lurie Children's Hospital of Chicago. During this webcast, I will ask a national expert about B. Cepatia and what you can do to reduce the risk of spreading or getting this germ. To learn about CF, other germs, nutrition, how to partner with your care center for improvement, and the latest in CF research, watch an archived webcast on the CF Foundation's website. Joining me is Dr. John LaPuma. John is a professor of pediatrics and epidemiology and the director of the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation's Burkholderia Cepatia Research Laboratory and repository at the University of Michigan. Welcome, John. John, my first question is, what is Cepatia? Cepatia is a bacteria that infects the lungs of people with cystic fibrosis. In fact, Burkholderia cepatia really represents a group of bacteria that are closely related. We refer to this now as the B. cepatia complex. This consists of 18 different species of bacteria some of these species are much more common in CF than others. Burkholderia sinocepatia, Burkholderia multivorans are the most common. Other species that we sometimes see are Burkholderia vietnamensis, Burkholderia dolosa, and finally Burkholderia cepatia, which really isn't uh, found that often at all. Another species called Burkholderia gladioli, which technically isn't part of the B. cepatia complex, is actually found fairly commonly. It's the third most common Burkholderia species found in CF. How does cepatia affect the health of people with cystic fibrosis? It's extremely variable. Some people, when they become infected with Burkholderia cepatia complex, do very poorly, fairly quickly. And they have a pretty steadily progressive decline in their lung health. Other people can remain infected for many years with not a lot of effect on their uh, overall lung health. In general, though, we would say that infection with Burkholderia cepatia or B. cepatia complex is associated overall with a uh, steeper decline in lung function than people who are not infected. Where does it come from? B. cepatia lives in the environment. Uh, it's known to uh, be found in soil, particularly around the roots of certain plants and in water. Um, people who are infected with Burkholderia, other people with CF that is, are a source, and um, occasionally we can find Burkholderia in hospital settings uh, contaminating uh, medicinals and pharmaceutical products. Well, how does a person with cystic fibrosis get cepatia? Well, by contacting one of those uh, sources. Uh, we think that most people who are infected with Burkholderia acquire it from the environment, although certainly acquiring it from other people who are infected uh, can be a significant source of acquisition as well. How do we know that a person with cystic fibrosis who has cepatia actually spreads it to another person with cystic fibrosis? Well, we know that because we have techniques in the laboratory that allow us to fingerprint, essentially, the uh, Burkholderi that we, that we acquire from one person. So we can get that in the laboratory. We can fingerprint that. We can take a strain that we've um, cultured from another person. And if they have the same DNA fingerprint, that provides evidence that there is sharing or transmission between pe uh, people. Can a person with cystic fibrosis that carried cepatia but is now free of cepatia through their sputum culture results for a couple of years, are they now cepatia free? Well, that's an, uh, a frequently asked question and in fact we really don't know the answer to that. We think that that does occur sometimes uh, but we also know that occasionally people can become culture negative and we think that results from the Burkholderia just being suppressed enough in their airways so that it's very difficult to culture. But then some time later they may be positive again and when we do that DNA fingerprinting that I just talked about between the earlier uh, isolate and the later one they're almost always the same indicating that the person was never really free of Burkholderia. How can people protect themselves from getting cepatia? Well, it's very difficult. As I said, cepatia lives out in the environment, so it's very difficult to avoid contact with it. 
although there are some things that we can do. We can uh, prevent people or ask people not to spend a lot of time digging in soil or doing things that raise a lot of dust from soil. Maybe cutting the lawn isn't the, a good thing to do. Maybe pl uh, potting plants, working in the garden isn't such a good thing to do. In terms of exposure to other people with Burkholderia, uh, we know that infection control is very effective at reducing the incidence of Burkholderia infection in people with CF. So difficult uh, to deal with the environmental exposure, but good infection control can really be very, very uh, effective in reducing acquisition from other people. If a person with cystic fibrosis who has cepatia but then has a lung transplant, are they now free of cepatia or other CF germs? Typically not. Although they have fresh lungs essentially that don't have those germs in them, those germs also reside in the upper airway and in the sinuses and they're very difficult to eradicate from those sites before transplant. So effectively after transplant they still have some of those germs in them and the new lungs can become infected. And John, are some types of cepatia more dangerous than others? Yes, we believe that certain of the species that I mentioned earlier, those 18 species, some of those are more dangerous than others. Cenocepatia seems to be worse among them. And we also know that certain strains within B. cenocepatia can be more dangerous to people. So there are certain what we call epidemic strains that seem to spread very quickly in clinics and many of those have been shown to be uh, quite dangerous and, and uh, quite deadly to people. All the more reason for good infection control Absolutely. measures? Absolutely, yes. Finally, John, what would you tell a parent w of a child with CF or an adult with cystic fibrosis to help them reduce their risk of getting cepatia? Well, the CF Foundation is um, publishing new guidelines for infection control, and these guidelines have many recommendations for specific things that we can do to lower the risk of acquiring cepatia and other bacteria. So the best thing to do is to follow those guidelines as best we can. Thank you, John. You're welcome. Please partner with your CF Care Center to learn more about Burkholderia cepatia complex. You can find more information on the CF Foundation's website under Living with CF. This concludes the CF Foundation's CF Education Day webcast. I would like to thank you for watching. John, thank you for answering the questions. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Rick Foster and the technical crew, Melissa Chin, Genentech and Gilead for the unrestricted educational grants, and thank you to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation for making this broadcast possible. Thank you.